Can you afford to lose 17 marks in this question, Waste Man? And I'm not even joking. It is actually 17 marks, mate. I even show you the question that the student sent to me. So I'm just going to YOLO it, you know, which is usually what I do because I just do these questions on the spot. So I've spent the time writing a question out. I have merged part B though, because it's just so much yap. I'm not gonna do part B and C separately. So we've got this hemispherical bowl radius, five centimeters. The bowl is filled, but leaks out from a hole at the base. At time T minutes, the volume is this. The rate at which the volume decreases is proportional to V. Show that dH dt is this for five cheeky marks. All right. This is a classic chain rule question. They want this. Now, whenever I say they want this, anyone who's been following me for a long time and all of my students on my course will know exactly what this is. It's the Wagwan formula, okay? What is the Wagwan formula, you might be asking? Okay, Wagwan is what you want. Wag. Well, it's not wa, it's the wa part. What you want is equal to what you've got times what you need. Wag one. Okay. So what do we want, mate? We want dH by dt. What have we got? Well, the question very clearly says here something about the rates. The rate, so that's a change in value, d by d something, at which the volume, so dv, decreases is proportional to v. So rate, rate with respect to time, yeah, will 99% be the case, because we they talked about time over here. So the rate at which the volume decreases, so dv by dt is proportional to v. So we've got dv by dt, we'll write that down in a second. Then what do we need to multiply this by, so that it simplifies to dh dt? Well, we need dh on top, and we need to cancel out the dv. All right, let's write down what well, actually, let's focus on the need first. So where are we going to get dh by dv from? Here. Yeah, we're going to differentiate this. How do we differentiate this? Most students would say we need to do the product rule because they see bricky and a h on the outside. But personally, I think there's an easier way is if you just multiply in the h squared and then it's just year 12 work. So we have v is one third pi. And then multiplying in the h squared, we have 15 h squared minus uh, h cubed. Now we differentiate. So this is known as a multiplier. Nothing happens there when we differentiate. It's just these functions of h. Bring down the 230h minus 3h squared. Now, I want to simplify this. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I want to expand that in because look at the answer. They got bricky, so maybe we want to factorize. So we can factorize out 3h. The 3 would cancel this dv by dh is 3 and a third cancel, we're left with pi. We can take out h. Now when we take out 3, that becomes 10 minus h. All right, I see 10 minus h there. Cool. I don't see a h out there or a pi. Uh, we'll see what's going on with that in a second. Okay. Oh, we have to reciprocate it. Yeah, because we want dh dv dv by dt, let's focus on that now. Alrighty then. Now we said before that the rate at which the volume decreases, so this rate is negative, yeah, is negative, is decreasing, is proportional to v. Proportional means some multiple of v. Some multiple, I'm going to use k v. But the only thing is that this answer is not in terms of v, it's in terms of h, so we need to replace v in terms of h. How are we going to do that? We know exactly what v is. We're just going to sub that in, mate. So what we got? We got minus k, minus k over 3. Now k is, a, is just a constant, right? It just means some multiple of. So what's going to end up happening is this k is going to multiply with the thirds and the pi's, and it's just going to absorb it all. Uh, but I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, that's why here there's a really clean. Actually, no, they don't absorb everything. Interesting. I personally, that k over 3, I would absorb it all into just one constant. And that means the k value would be slightly adjusted uh, over here where I can see they asked you to find k. So if I absorbed it, it would be three times bigger. It would be three times bigger than this. Yeah. 
but yeah, they didn't do it. Anyway, we have minus k v. v is one third, so I'll say k over 3 pi. Uh, h squared 15 minus h. Therefore, uh, dh by dt is. So I'm going to write all of this on the numerator with the 3 on the denominator. So I get minus k pi h squared 15 minus h all over 3. And then remember, we're timesing it by dh dv, which is the reciprocal of this. So I'm just going to put all of this in the denominator. So I get pi h uh, 10 minus h. And that's it. We're done. Okay, so that is part A. I'm going to obviously write this clean, but um, we, I'm going to write this clean over here and let's carry on. Sweet. Rightio, bruv. We've got the part B, the Neumarker. marker. Although in the screenshot, part B was actually to do partial fractions on something else, but uh, it's just, we can figure it out from here, yeah? So we need to solve this. They want us to solve for h in terms of t. So to do that, we're first going to multiply through by dt and decide if we need brackets. Now here, the answer is no when you times through by dt. Everything's protected already. So that 10 minus h is going to go up. Now we're going to multiply through by this. And this h, 15 minus h, is going to come down. So divided by h, 15 minus h. And that's dh is, then we get minus k over 3 dt. All right. Now I'm thinking about the answer here. They do only have minus k. So, I mean, we can still go about this. Yeah, and I'll show you kind of what happens. I reckon that over 3 is just going to end up cancelling. So you don't even need to times 3 by the 3. But things may cancel anyway. So we need to do partial fractions on this because we need to integrate both sides. Okay. We have all the h's on one side and everything else is on the other side. So, how do you do partial fractions on this? Let me show you guys a cool trick here. So you need to take into account both denominators, right? h and 15 minus h. a and b. How do we do partial fractions super quick? When you want to find a, you just say what makes that zero? Uh, what makes the denominator zero? It's h is zero. You cover up h on both sides, and you just sub in h is 0 here. You would have, what, 10 over 15, which is, what, 2 thirds? Cool, that will end up cancelling with that, right? So with b, what makes that equal 0 is 15. So you cover up this. You just sub in 15. 10 minus 15, 10 minus 15 over 15. What is that? Minus 5 over 15, which is minus a third. Okay, so I'm just going to eliminate this bit and then I'm going to start slowly writing or eliminating more. So a over, it was a over h. So it becomes a two thirds over h minus one third over 15 minus h dh is the integral of minus k over 3 dt. So we can actually times through by 3. Now, I'm not going to write a whole new step for this, guys, but when you times through by 3, all these 3's are going to cancel. We're going to get 2 over h, 2 over h. We're going to get minus 1 over, and then we're going to get minus k. Beautiful, mate. Easy maths. Now, we just integrate. This is clearly ln, so this is going to be... So, I'll show you the guess. You guys know I love a guess. So, ln of h differentiates to 1 over h, but we want 2 over h, so we double both sides, so 2 ln h. For this one, in the main exam, guys, always do this guess. You ain't got time to make mistakes. So you guess none of the denominator, you differentiate this, you get over 15 minus h, which when you differentiate, you get minus 1. And this is a very common mistake. When students integrate this, they write minus ln 15 minus h, but actually, it integrates to the positive version. So we actually have 2 ln h, then we get plus ln 15 minus h is the integral 
of k, uh, minus k, k is a number, it's like minus 2, minus 2 would integrate to minus 2t, so there's minus kt, big up kt in that. If you don't see kt in your answer, you've probably done something wrong. Now, you're probably wondering, where's my constant of integration? I do not write plus c, that's the noob way of doing things. Constant of integration goes within the lun. It's the easiest way of doing things. It's the easiest way to collect the light terms and just get rid of learn, isn't it? So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up that 2, yeah, which means we're going to square this. So we get learn of, now when you square this, you're going to square both the a and the h. So you're going to get h squared. But when you square a, a squared, a is an unknown constant. So when you square it, you just rewrite it as a new one. Plus learn of 15 minus h is minus kt. Bring these together through the plus, so we get ln of bh squared times 15 minus h is minus kt. Then we do e to the power of both sides. You guys can see that. e to the power of both sides, we'll get rid of this. e to the power of minus kt. Now we can work out what b is. Because we basically got the form, so, oh, I reckon b is going to be uh, 1 over 250. So can you see here guys, what I would end up doing actually is dividing by b first. So you can see there's no coefficient here. I thought for a second b was going to be 1, but actually I see this number here. So if you keep the b over here, when you work out your constant, this is going to be 1 over 250. But if you move the constant to the other side, it would be worth 250. Okay. Now how do we do that? When you divide by b, this will be 1 over b. But you don't write 1 over b. b is a constant that you don't know, so you just redefine it as a different letter. We can use c. Okay. Now we can sum in. When t is 0, h is 5. So when uh, that should go now. When t is 0, h is 5. And I'm assuming this is going to multiply to give me 250. So 5 squared is 25 times... 50 months. Yep. Cool, mate. And there we go. We have proved this for nine marks. Didn't even need part B. Whatever that said, it was something to do with partial fractions. But we don't need it, mate. Okay, beautiful. Nine marks. Easy, mate. Given also that T is 2, H is 4, find the value of K to 3SF. All right, that's all right. So we just need this solution. Uh... I'm just going to carry on with my working up here. So this is, this is easy. Everyone should be able to do this even if you're in year 12, mate. Which they're probably not watching this video. So, uh, when t is 2, h is 4. So we get 4 squared times 15 minus 4 is 11. Is 250e to the minus kt. But t is 2, so 2k. Two Alright, so when I rearrange for k, I'm going to be super lazy here. I'm dividing by 250. I'm then learning both sides. This is literally what I'd write in the exam. And then I'm dividing the whole thing by minus 2. <laughs> Yo, alright. So, uh, let me do that. I, I've got calculators galore right now. So i got Lun, lun of 16 times 11 over 250 divided by minus dos. I get about 0 0.175. And that is my solution to uh, this 17 mark question. So hopefully there was no issues here. Guys, if you Learn something today or enjoyed the video, hit the like button, drop a comment how you might have approached this question and uh, subscribe for more content. If you're interested in my maths courses, there's a link in the description and I've got a Lung Gang Reddit where you guys can submit questions, discuss all things maths. I made this Reddit for you guys. See you in the next video. Nice. <laughs>